Hey, brothers and sisters, sorry it's been so long since, um, <clears throat> since I last recorded. So, I kind of wanted to go over one little tidbit before I get into the main subject of today's video, of this video. Um, so... The little subject at the beginning is I found a scripture that perfectly describes the vast majority of people today who don't have testimonies of Christ. It's Proverbs 14, verses 14 through 16. And it reads, The back slider in heart shall be filled with his own way and a good man shall be satisfied from himself the simple believeth every word but the prudent man looketh well to his going a wise man feareth and departeth from evil But the fool rageth and is confident. So, when I say that the vast majority of people without testimonies of God and Christ fit into a specific category, there are even those that act like they have testimonies who fit into the category of the fool. Or the backslider who goeth in his own way. Or the simple man that believes all things. Or I should say, that believeth every word. So many today we see who rage so confidently about what they're talking about and they're foolish in such we see people who are so filled with thinking that they know what's right that they don't want to recognize that they're wrong. And so many of those same people who do the previous two things believe every word spoken by the leaders of whatever political group they follow. Whether it be for good or bad. And we need to love these people no matter what. But we need to avoid some of the things that are said in today's political field that it's just foolishness. So that's the little tidbit. Um, I'll be posting this separately as its own little short. So, all right. Okay, so now on to the main subject of this video. So, a few weeks ago, I saw a question about eternal progression and how some people are being taught in the church that if you achieve anything less than exaltation that you will have eternal progression
and the first note that we need to make the first notation that we need to understand is what does it mean to be eternal what does that word mean what does eternal mean because while god's glory working glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man it does not say all men so i'm going to read some excerpts from talks by presidents of the church as well as ge other mem other general authorities and i want you to understand that i have nothing against the teaching that eternal progression exists because it does it absolutely does for those who reach exaltation for all those that reach less than exaltation right eternal progression cannot take place and here's why the word eternal when we think of eternal life, when we think of eternal progression, right? Literally means God's, God's progression, God's eternal life or God's life, right? To live as God. So we're gonna start off for, with an excerpt from the talk called Eternal Life, Blessings and Privileges of Saints. This talk was by Brigham Young. It was delivered in the Tabernacle of the Great Salt Lake on October 6th, 1859. It was recorded by G. D. Watt. But what of all that? He's referring to eternal life and progression. Those things were but for a moment. That's our temporary life, our mortal life. And we are now here. So what of our trials? What of our the, the, the things we go through in our temporary life? We're where we are now. Those things helped us make us better. We have been faithful during a few moments in our mortality. And now we enjoy eternal life and glory. So after we've died, after we've suffered and been faithful during our mortal life, we now enjoy eternal life and glory. With power to progress in all the boundless knowledge and through the countless stages of progression, enjoying the miles and approbation of our Father and God and of Jesus Christ our brother. Okay. So to sum it up, after we have been 100% faithful, we've made mistakes here and there, but we have been faithful and we have achieved eternal life, exaltation. They are not 
separatable. Exaltation is eternal life. Eternal life is exaltation. Only then do we receive progress in all the boundless knowledge through the countless stages of progression, enjoying the miles and, a, and approbation of our Father. Only if we receive exaltation, eternal life, those are the same thing, do we receive progression. The next is in a set in a talk that was untitled by Elder J. Reuben Clark Jr. of the Council of the Twelve Apostles. Uh, it was in his conference talk of April 1951. pages 78 through 80. This is just going to be an excerpt out of that. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And behind that great principle and that commandment lies the eternity of, mar of the marriage. Covenant. So, behind the great principle of eternal life, is that great commandment of the eternity of the marriage covenant. The creation of bodies to tabernacle spirits that our Heavenly Father created and to bring them to this earth so that they might have mortal bodies live according to the commandments of God that they might, in their next estate, begin and go on through the eternities in eternal progression. Not that they will, that they might. Bringing the children to this earth does not guarantee that you will continue to progress forever. It does not guarantee you progression. Just living in a mortal plane does not mean that you will eventually progress from the celestial to the terrestrial. You can't. Once you are placed in those kingdoms, you are stuck forever. Hence the words final judgment. The next excerpt is from The Blessings of Eternal Glory by President Joseph Fielding Smith, given in October 1965. My dear brethren and sisters, I hope and pray that what I shall say may be uplifting to one and all. He wants us to know that he wants all of us to learn from this. I have many letters cross my desk in regards to the subject which I shall discuss, the blessings of eternal glory.
eternal, meaning God, glory. The glory that God can now holds, that we will hold if we reach exaltation. If we refuse to live by the covenants we make, especially in the house of the Lord, that we cannot receive the blessings to those covenants. So whether we make them or don't make them, if we cannot receive the blessings of those covenants, <coughs> In eternity, if the responsibilities of parenthood are willfully avoided here, then how can the Lord bestow upon the guilty the blessings of eternal increase? Again, eternal God's forever, beyond eternity. It is God's increase, the increase of being a God, forever increasing in knowledge and glory, eternal progression, right? It cannot be, and they shall be denied such blessings. The next excerpt is from Decisions for Eternity by Elder Russell M. Nelson. Uh, I don't have when he gave this talk, but the reference to this excerpt is Doctrine and Covenants 14.7. The Lord's way is the only way for us to experience enduring happiness. His way brings sustained comfort to our souls and perennial peace to our homes. And best of all, his way leads us to him. And our Heavenly Father to eternal life and exaltation, which are the same thing. And yes, he separates them, but they are the same. Exaltation, eternal life. Exaltation means to become a God. Eternal life means to live as gods. Teach your children by Elder Eldred G. Smith, the Patriarch of the Church, in 1948, October Congress. God has been so kind to us. He has given us the wonderful promise of eternal progression in our family units. If we will but obey his way. His laws. Sorry, trying to read sideways. <laughs> if we will but obey his laws. Yet it is constantly being brought to my attention that many members of the church not taking full advantage are not taking full advantage of their blessings. So the only way to achieve eternal progression is to obey God's laws. Okay, 
The next excerpt comes from another talk by Brigham Young. Actually, it comes from the teachings of the prophets, Brigham Young. And it reads, it reads, if men are faithful, they and their creator will always be one. They will always be one, be of one heart and of one mind, working and operating together. For whatsoever the Father doeth, so doeth the Son. And so they continue through all their operations to all eternity. DNC 97. The Lord would like to see us take the course that leads us to the straight. The war, the Lord would like us to take the course that leads. The Lord would like us to, would like to see us take the course that leads unto the straight gate, that we might be crowned sons and daughters of God, for such the only ones in the heavens who multiply and increase. They, the rest, take, in, take an inferior kingdom where this privilege is denied them. It is for us to choose whether we will be sons and daughters, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, or whether we accept an inferior glory. The next quote is again from Brigham Young. None would inherit earth when it became celestial and translated into the presence of God, but those who would be crowned as gods, all others would have to inherit another kingdom. Wilford Woodruff said, if there was if there was a point where man in his progression could not proceed any further the very idea would throw a gloom over every intelligent creature now note he says man not every man Okay, now that I'm home, I can actually read a few more. Sorry, I was... My previous recording area, the reason my background has changed, is because I was picking my little sister up from a wedding. So, to continue with the lesson, Bruce R. McConkie said, There are those who say that there is progression from one kingdom to another in the eternal world. This is worse than false. It is an evil and pernicious doctrine. That is from his speech at BYU called Seven Deadly Heresies on the 1st of June, 1980. 
This is heresy number five. George Albert Smith says, There are some people who supposed that if we are quickened celestial bodies, that eventually through the ages of eternity, we will come, <clears throat> sorry, we will continue to progress until we find our place in the celestial kingdom. But scriptures and revelation Scripture and revelations of God have said that those who are quickened celestial bodies cannot come where God and Christ dwell. Worlds cannot come, sorry, worlds without end. George Albert Smith in the conference report, October. 1945 Spencer W. Kimball says after a person has been assigned to his place in a kingdom he will never advance from his assigned glory to another glory Melvin J. Ballard states those whose lives have entitled them to terrestrial glory can never gain celestial glory. One who gains possession of the lowest degree of the celestial glory may ultimately rise to the highest of that glory. But no provision has been made for promotion from one glory to another. That's in the discourse of the uh, in the Ogden Tabernacle, 22nd of September, 1922. Joseph Fielding Smith stated, It has been asked, If it is possible for one who inherits the celestial glory to advance in time to the celestial glory, the answer to this question is no. That's in the Doctrine of Salvation, page 31. Hi, right, brothers and sisters. Well, that's it for today. So, I love you. Have a wonderful night. And I hope you all have a beautiful rest.